Welcome to the Salon Scheduler video on understanding checkout. Just going to go over some details relating to what's going on under the behind the scenes here. Okay. First of all, the scheduler, what we're doing when you check out an appointment, like I'm just going to pick an appointment here. And when you check out an appointment, what you're actually doing or what the scheduler is doing is it's actually creating a clover order. And then, um, so like, let's say we just pick a, an item right here. Okay. So we create a clover order. So I'm going to tap checkout right here. Okay. We create a clover order. And then we basically are putting you on the clover register so that you can finish paying for that clover order. Okay. See right there. Now there's a name right here. This is the employee that performed this service. Okay. Now, when you're on this uh, particular screen, you can add other items or make adjustments. And as you do, we pop up a box. That box is, uh, is giving you an opportunity to uh, basically to credit the employee with that particular item or sale. Okay. We use these, this byline right here. Uh, we use this information in, um, in our service report to pay your commissions. Again, you want to use the Scalon scheduler uh, service report to pay your commissions, not the Clover report, because the Clover report is based on who's logged in at the time of a sale. That's right here. That's not useful if you have multiple items on a sale. And so we don't use the who's logged in from Clover. We use our own line right here by and then the name to determine who gets credit for a particular sale. That can be the name of the employee or the nickname of the employee either way. Okay. Now, the other thing you can do is you can make adjustments. You know, you can add a, uh, a an order level discount, you know, and uh, we don't recommend you do this. But what that does is that's a, a certain percentage off the entire order. Uh, we don't recommend this because, see, we don't know who gets credit for this discount right here, this $2. Was it Frank or was it Elvis? We don't know. So it, what we'd recommend if you're going to do discounting is that you can tap on an item and you can add a discount that way. See right there. Now that's an item on, that's a discount on an item. And we obviously know this discount would be credited to Frank because it's on this item. Okay. So just make sure you realize there's two different kinds of items. Now, some of you may not need to be able, you know, this whole idea of being able to specify an employee, uh, you may want to turn that off because you don't do commissions or you don't, you know, you, you have fewer employees. So you're not worried about commissions. And the way you turn that prompting off, you tap on the three line menu and you tap on the uh, settings. And then after it does the audit, what you want to do is go to the reports, report settings. Okay. See right here, there's a option. It says prompt register for employee. You want to turn that to no. And if you turn that to no, then when you buy items on the register, we'll no longer, uh, you know, ask you for an employee that goes with it. Okay. Allow skip on the register. You know, sometimes you just want, you're in a hurry and you don't want to choose an employee for items like products. Uh, it's a little dangerous because sometimes people use it accidentally on a service, but so you can use that. Now, in any case, whatever you do, you want to recognize that the scheduler report is what's going to report uh, commission items. And that's under the reports tab right here. You can go to view reports. Okay. Or you can just directly from the three line item menu right here, you can tap view reports. Okay. And our report is going to take those things into account. Okay. The other thing you want to know about checkout is related to credit cards. You know, when you tap on an appointment, we do tell you if that, if there is a, uh, a deposit on that order, for example, right here, uh, by the way, here, before I get there, so you can see on the actual appointment, we put, if there's a deposit, we show it right in front of the customer's name. We also pop it up when you, um, when you open the appointment and see there's a clover order number right here okay you can look up that clover order number in the clover orders app so that you can either verify that deposit for example in this case or so you can do a refund so we're going to look that up again bx9q7 okay so we're going to go to the clover orders app right here see you can do a search right here i'm going to type bx9 there you go there's the order okay you can tap on it and see, this was a cash transaction, so you can just tap on it, and it'll let you do a refund if you're going to do a refund of the cash transaction, or if you're going to do a, if this was a credit card, it'd be the same thing, okay? So I want to make sure you understand that you do have access to the order information for a deposit. Um, if there was a no-show on, if there was a no-show, then you could tap on the no-show button right here, 
And if there's a card on file, we'll ask you if you want to charge the card on file. And we'll ask you the amount if they haven't already pre-approved an amount. Okay, so that's a quick way. Now, same thing here. If they if you charge them, what we'll do is we'll create a Clover order and then we'll charge that Clover order. Okay, and, you'll, and it'll be visible in your Clover orders. This is important because just so you know, there's no charges in your Clover that occur without an order associated with it. Okay, so that's just the way the Clover works. So that's what you do for a no-show. You can also, for checkouts, you can include a cash deposit or a credit deposit. If there was a card on file, you'd see a credit deposit option right here. Okay. Last thing to know is if you need to check out more than one appointment at the same time, you can tap on the first appointment and tap the add to basket right there. Okay. Then you go to the second appointment or the third or the fourth, and you can basically keep adding different items to the basket and tap checkout on the final item. And it'll check out all the items all on one order because sometimes you need to do that. Okay, so that's pretty much everything you need to know about checkout.